Hello guys and welcome back to my channel, it's Jade here. In today's video we're going to be talking about common types of technical tests that are given in an interview. And so the reason why we're talking about this is because I find that a lot of people that I speak to are quite anxious about the technical tech stage. That just seems to get everyone really really nervous about the different types of technical tests they're going to encounter. And I think the reason why is because there's just so many and a lot of candidates just don't know how to prepare and what to prepare for. And so this is really just going to be going through common types of technical tests that you might encounter and how to prepare for those and what you might expect from that interview. And so without further ado, let's get into it. The first type of technical test we're going to be talking about is the DSA filter. DSA stands for Data Structure and Algorithms and you'll typically test, be tested upon the following things such as binary search, array, linked list, um, depth test search, breadth test search and these are just common types of data structure and algorithms that you might be asked about. When you're like starting in your career and you are trying to learn data structure and algorithms I typically recommend to at least First, understand how to work with different types of data structures such as arrays, linked lists, hash maps and queues and stacks because they're the most common types of ones that you're typically going to be asked for, especially for a junior role. The reason why these are asked so much is because they are very, very easy to objectively test. And what I mean by objectively is that they can be graded in a way that means that without even knowing who the candidate is, they won't have any sort of biases or anything like that. So from a pro's point of view, they typically take one to two hours. So when you're actually doing the test, you don't have like a long time that you need to do it. They are objectively graded so uh, from an interviewer's perspective they don't have any biases about a particular individual and they can be automated as well and so from a employer's point of view you know this takes a lot of time out of that the equation for them because they don't have to grade it themselves however from a cons point of view they can sometimes be seemingly unrelated to what the job description is. So like a lot of times DSA is for very, very specific scenarios. And if you don't relate that back to business requirements, some people might struggle with that. The other con from working in DSA is that it really, really can invoke performance anxiety for different types of people who aren't very good in an exam setting. And the other side is that it doesn't really assess the way that candidate can deliver real functional requirements and so you might get someone who is very good at, at very good at solving algorithms but when given a customer requirement isn't thinking about the customer's best interest. So the way if I was a company would caveat this is to try and not just make it a data structure and algorithms test but I would also try to incorporate either some sort of fun in there or a business requirement in there, for example. I think things like Advent of Code do this really, really well, where you are asked to solve the problem, but you're also like having to like solve it for a specific scenario slash use case. So that might be something to consider if a you're a company and you want to use this type of technical test. So the next one we're going to be talking about is the take home test. So the take home test is typically trying to assess the candidate's skills in their own space and seeing how they deliver a requirement that's been set to them. And so this is a real opportunity for a candidate to basically say, OK, I'm going to showcase all the different architecture skills, all the different testing skills, all the different clean code principles skills that I've learned and show them that I can deliver this. And so from a pro's perspective, it really, really gives the candidate an opportunity to showcase their like technical skills. It shows them their business requirement gathering skills, and it really does show the different quality um, skills that the candidate has picked up as well. However, from a cons point of view, it can make the candidate 
put too much effort in so they could end up spending hours and hours on something that really should only be given two hours to do and it can also detract away candidates who don't want to spend a lot of time on a take-home technical test too. It can be from an interviewer's perspective, difficult to objectively grade because they might be looking for things that they do themselves and that can produce bias, for example. You could also theoretically cheat on the test because you could give someone else to do it for you. But in my experience, you would typically ask the interviewee what, what they've done, why they've done that. And if you ask that in an interview, then you can quickly gather whether or not the interviewee has actually done the test and they know what they're talking about. For companies that are using this approach I would definitely suggest to time box the activity, give it a rough estimate for how long you think the candidate should take on it and to rather than make them implement a full feature identify a few different things that you want to test upon and get them to do that for example. The third type of technical test is the pair programming exercise. The pair programming exercise is all about basically getting the interviewee to come in and work with someone in the team already, typically like a senior or a lead within the team, and they're asking you to basically deliver a functional requirement for them and they're going to be watching you as you do it and guiding you and providing different suggestions for you. The pros of this approach is that you really get to learn from skilled engineers and be guided throughout your interview and then you that allows you to really see and improve on different areas if you're not quite sure where you need to improve on the moment. It becomes very, very clear from that interview what things you need to work on. The second pro that I see is that it is time box and so you don't have to worry about spending loads of time in it and actually you typically are asked to give one or two requirements rather than a massive feature than you might, which you might do in a take home technical test, for example. The third thing that I see is that it's a really good chance for you to showcase your skills and the way that you think and it's a really, really good chance to communicate with other people. The cons I see of this approach is that it does slightly favour people who are more extroverted. I think if you are an introvert or you do have social anxiety, for example, this type of technical test you might find really difficult because you're asked to perform in front of someone you've never met before, you've never worked before. That's not a true example of working with a colleague because you'll have made those relationships Whereas when you're doing an interview, you are actively being monitored and assessed. Another con is that it really does require skilled interviewers to be able to balance that so that if someone is anxious, if someone is introverted, the interviewer knows how to get the best out of them. I think for companies that are wanting to adopt this approach, a really, really good thing to do is to give the interviewee some details beforehand on what they're going to be implementing because it then gives them a bit of chance to digest the information and go away and then when they come to the day hopefully they won't be as anxious as they would be if they had no idea what they were doing. One thing to note for candidates is if you don't like this type of working, if you don't like pair programming and the company does this quite a lot, it might be worth asking whether this opportunity is the right thing for you because if you that isn't the way that you like to, to work then it might not align with your interests and be what you enjoy day to day. The fourth type of technical test we're going to be talking about is called the prompt. The prompt is really where someone might be taking your experience, whether it's on your CV or whether you've been talking about it, and trying to ascertain whether or not you have the required skills that they are looking for based on your experience that you've said. And so typically a company might identify a few key areas that they want to ask a candidate about and then basically when they're interviewing the candidate they're trying to refine that evidence and find whether or not they have the skills necessary and so in the interview they might be saying okay can you tell me about a time when you've worked with this language is there any particular libraries that you've used what tech 
what tests did you ask? Did you find any difficulties with writing those tests? What were the challenges that you overcame? And if they're really, really trying to identify whether or not you've done testing, whether you've done continuous integration, whether you've worked with um, a messaging bus and whether you understand event-based driven architecture, it can become quite apparent within that interview, for example. The pros I see with this approach is that it is one hour long and so you typically don't need to prepare for it because it is just going on your previous experience and providing you've not lied or providing you're not trying to like lie, then it's really, really hard to fabricate those things anyway. You'll quickly get found out if you try to fabricate those things. It really is a chance to own in on what makes you specific and unique. You can really, really like own in on different things that you've done that other people haven't. And so that is a great opportunity to do that in this type of interview. The cons that I see with this type of interview is that it is quite easy to be biased in that if you find as an interviewer you have things in common with who you're interviewing then you can easily get into a rabbit hole of okay let's let's start talking about all these things that were we both enjoy even if they're not necessarily the best qualified candidate so the best thing really for an interviewer is just to focus on those three key areas and make sure they just try and find the evidence rather than trying to get in into detail about different things that they've both worked on together. Another like con I see of this approach, again, is that it isn't really tailored to juniors because juniors don't have a lot of experience that they can talk about. So this type of approach might not necessarily work well for juniors in the industry. Another thing is if the interviewer doesn't have the correct skills for prompting, then it can quickly turn quite awkward and they're not getting the best out of candidates that they don't necessarily have much in common with, which is why it's really, really important to focus on interviewer skills for this type of approach. The next type of test we're going to be talking about is called the whiteboard. So the whiteboard is typically where you are going to be in a room with a few of the colleagues at the company and you are going to be given a task to solve on a whiteboard. And so you might be asked to write some pseudocode, you might be asked to architect some sort of diagram and like do some design systems thinking. And that is the typical type of like test that you would have for, for that kind of um, thing. The pros that I see with this approach again is that it is quite short. It really, really works well for people that are architecting their thinking, just say that they've done a lot of systems design. It can be very easy to see that from this type of approach because it's quite a natural way of design showing systems and displaying how you would architect a system. What I would also say is that it allows interviewers to see how people think and how their ideas then come to fruition because we all tend to think very differently and the way that we approach visualising and sharing our ideas can be quite different as well. The cons that I see of this approach is that sometimes it can very much favour presenting rather than actually development skills. So if you are a good presenter, if you are quite extroverted, if you don't have any sort of anxiety, it can quite favour you in that you are asked to present something, you're asked to draw something on a whiteboard and you can can do that because you find it quite easy. Whereas someone who is quite introverted might be a bit thrown off guard, and might not enjoy that as an experience and especially if they aren't comfortable and know the people who they're working with. It's typically not a common way for a lot of candidates to work and so you just have to question whether or not you're actually assessing the development skills or you're assessing the presenting skills and is the presenting skills something that is actually important to your current role that you're hiring for. Again, for companies that are adopting this approach, I would say it might be a good idea to share a little bit of information before the interview what you are going to be interviewing the candidate on and what you're going to be asking about because that can help relieve some of the anxieties that they might have. The last one we're going to be talking about is the exam. In my opinion, this, this type of 
technical test, I would say is probably the one that I like the least because I think it is the easiest one to either cheat and doesn't actually provide the value that a company needs. And so let's talk a little bit about this one. This one is usually one where you would be given like multiple choice questions or you would be asked to play or text write something and you would typically be graded on, on that and you might be graded on a specific language or on a specific area of code, for example, such as if you were asked to write SQL. And the reason why I don't like this approach is because it kind of assumes that you need to know very, very specific knowledge about the company's current way of working. And so I really, really wouldn't recommend this as an approach for a company. The pros of this approach really is that, again, it's easy to objectively mark from a company's point of view it's easy to give a scoring at the end of it and say whether or not a candidate is suitable for the role from that and it typically will not take longer than an hour however the cons of this approach is that it does usually assume that you have knowledge on their specific system like whether you have knowledge on um, C Sharp or something and that might be okay if you are hiring a C Sharp specialist for example but in the majority of cases most companies aren't and so it, that's just something to consider. It's also very easy to cheat when not done in an exam setting and so that can mean that you don't necessarily get the output that you want from it because you're not actually testing the candidate at that point, you're just testing that they know how to Google and find the answers that you've asked for. With tests like these, I always like to ask whether or not the things that the company are testing for are actually what they want in candidates. In my opinion, I think there are a lot better tests out there that can actually assess the candidate and their abilities. I would genuinely recommend not using this approach just because I don't actually think it tests the candidate's ability to do the role in most cases. Final thoughts from me. For companies, it most of these technical tests are valid to do. It's just important for you to realise what the pros and what the cons are. If you do think you want to diversify your technical tests, I typically say having two to three of these which are quite different from each other to give the candidates options on which test they would prefer to do is quite a good way to go because it means that you are letting them work in the way that is most natural to them and then you can assess from that. However, I do acknowledge that it is a little bit more time consuming and can sometimes promote bias if not managed properly from the company side. For candidates, just know that if you do badly in one technical test, it doesn't mean that you are going to do badly in every technical test. These things take time and just see each technical test as a learning opportunity. Each one is. And so if you do badly at data structure and algorithms, for example, you just need to understand where you went wrong and just put the effort into trying to improve on different areas. You might decide that it isn't something that you are ready to get good at at the moment and you might want to focus your effort on different technical tests that you think you can do. What's important is really just to try and keep an open mind when doing these because it does help you get better. For example, I really, really struggled with data structure and algorithm at first and then continuous practice really, really helped me. Same with whiteboarding style things. Because I do have social anxiety, those things really, really, really affect me. But actually by practicing my presentation skills, by working with customers, I've actually got a lot better at doing things like that and that's made me a better engineer overall. So try and not discount things straight off the bat, but do know and recognise that there are going to be technical tests that do cater to your strengths as well. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, could you please give it a like and subscribe? I post weekly content on my YouTube and on my blog and I've also added the link to my blog and my LinkedIn below. Please follow me on there if you don't already. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye guys!